Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the MMA betting breakdown for tomorrow's card. Uh, I guess that's UFC 283. And again, I just wanted just to give this kind of uh, overview of the way I handle uh, all these betting breakdowns. Um, maybe one day I won't waste five, ten minutes of your time with this, but for those of you watching this for the first time, I think it is important. Um, as you guys know, I also do a daily fantasy analysis, and it's important to know the difference between how to analyze for DFS and how to analyze for, for betting. As, as I mentioned quite a bit, one of the, well, one of the overarching presumptions or assumptions for DFS is that the Vegas lines and the prop lines are accurate. Um, what, what you do for DFS analysis is you take these kind of implied win probabilities and finish probabilities as determined by Vegas, accept them sort of at face value, and then project fantasy points based on those presumptions or project, you know, whether something's a good play based on those presumptions. And the way you get an edge is by being good at, at making those projections and or uh, probably and being really, really good at constructing lineups that leverage, you know, low owned plays um, uh, with, with and, and just figuring out how to make lineups of good plays and not just knowing what good plays are. That's that's a different discussion. However, when you're dealing with betting, whether it be, I mean, anything like betting on the stock market, betting on basketball, betting on MMA, the, the overarching presumption is the opposite. The overarching presumption is that is that there's something wrong with the line. Uh, if, if you if you if you believe that you have an edge in, in betting this stuff, you have to you know by definition believe that there's something wrong with the line, um, and that you know more than the sum of the of of the knowledge in the world that has come up with this line, whether it be the bookies initial line plus all the money that's piled in. I mean, again, that could be somewhat depressing to think about, but when you're when you're betting that this is what you're this is what you're basically announcing to the world. You're announcing the world that you know you're smarter than the world. I mean, honestly. Um, now that doesn't mean that that if that depresses you, you shouldn't bet. You know, listen, betting is is fun. You know, even if you're not, you can't necessarily get a great edge. I mean, there's something to be said about the fun of just having something going on the fights, you know, or have something going on the game. And even if maybe even you're 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 losing a little bit, you have a little negative equity there. And there's enough variance that you know you'll get a couple of wins, maybe a couple of losses, and just makes the whole process a little more fun to watch some of these uh, events. Um, but when you when you are going to bet, what you have to do is figure out where your edge is, right? And just at least best figure out what your edge is. Maybe you don't have one. And look, this MMA. I mean, you're trying to fight twenty cent, thirty cent, forty cent lines. Some of these even greater. It's very difficult to 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 actually have an edge over these lines. But what you can do, or what I do, is the same thing that I do when I analyze stocks, which has made me all my money in the, in my life, in every other sports uh, betting endeavor that I have. Right. The the idea is that the line is what it is. Okay. And what I'm able to do is figure out how much of what goes into that line is caused by 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 nonsense meaning uh, uh, bias or just you know uh, all different types of biases like recency bias whether you like somebody's a, bi a big name whether somebody you know the public just likes or maybe you know th there's something about another fighter that just doesn't you know people don't like or there's a particular narrative that just makes so much sense that people are betting that narrative, even though the narrative might not exactly, you know, correlate to the actual result. And this is the way you analyze, I, I analyze stocks as well. Just presume from the beginning that the stock price is supposed is, is what it's supposed to be. But then you think about how much of that stock's price is driven by, by popularity, you know, or or, or just love of a stock or hate of a stock. And likewise, when someone's betting on a particular fight or a particular prop, how much of that is driven by just what people just feel should happen or want to happen as opposed to the data that supports what actually should happen. So um, when, I, when I go through my MMA betting breakdown, it's, it's going to be a lot different than every other one that you'll see. And all I will tell you is this, so far, uh, it's done really well, the exception of last week.
Last week, just full disclosure, we went 0, 0, and 11. May have gone 0 and 12 if one fight wasn't canceled, but 0 and 11. Now, we did play, play big long shots there, so it's not that, you know, not that surprising, but it's, it's going to happen sometimes when you're contrarian. Um, but nonetheless, uh, when, when I go through my analysis, you'll kind of see where I come up with this stuff. And overall, we're still doing well. And forget, forget that. I mean, this is a, a long sample size that you're never going to be able to get to if you follow me. But just prom I promise you this, that if you follow this line of thinking, it, it, it is it's responsible for all my successes in life. And I think it will help you think about gambling in a, in a different way. Okay, how about that? Okay, so uh, first fight, we have Salmon Oliveira versus Daniel Marcos. So I, I've been absorbing content and, and looking at takes and all this stuff all week long, you know? And I would say that for a minus 145, 125 fight, I'm seeing probably 90% of the action on Daniel Marcos. And when I say the action, I don't mean the actual money flows. I just mean the takes, you know? And I would say if I had to break down um, how many people are on one side, I would say that probably 90% of, of at least the people I listen to or watch were on the Marcos side. Um, and I think people just look for just underdogs to play in general. Um, they said, listen, there are 15 fights. I have to take an underdog. It's not DFS. You, know, you don't have to take an underdog. But when you have this kind of fight of 15 cards, people say, well, which underdogs am I taking? Without even thinking if there might not be any good underdogs. And, and Marcos just seems to be one of these guys that people are just are just playing. And so for me, I think there's probably some, it's some sneaky inherent line value in Oliveira. So we're going to start with playing Oliveira. Now, there's no particular lean towards finish or not finish. So I don't think you get any edge there. So we're just going ahead and take Oliveira. Now, one thing I forgot to do is let you guys know what I do here. We are going to bet every single fight, and we are going to bet one unit every fight. And this is, so listen, you could argue this. Maybe you should be passing. If you don't like something, that's fine. But that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to find something every fight, bet the same amount. And for me, one unit is $180. I'm going to bet $180 on 15 fights. And with any luck, some of them get canceled. And you'll see exactly what I'm betting. So we're going to go one minus 145 uh, for 180. All right. Uh, next fight, we have Nunez versus uh, Zara Farron. Okay. This is, I mean, you, there's, listen, there's one set of sharp people who are kind of like on, on Farron. But aside from them, I've seen just nothing but 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 Nunez love, okay? And I'm not saying that people are saying that that that, that she's worth minus 500, but what I am seeing is is the idea that Farron is awful. You know, just just the you know uh, just the pits, just the worst in the UFC, not UFC material, whatever it is, and that Nunez is basically just going to walk her down and KO her, all right? Um, so any prop or any bet that has Nunez by KO for me is just overvalued because it just fits the narrative just, just too much. So what I think I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm, I'm between two things. I would, I would normally say I would take Farron, but I also feel as though these plus 400s are by their nature kind of undervalued. I feel as though that these, that when you have these minus 500 and minus 800s, they set these lines so that you, no one can really take the favorite and they're really just, just hoping that some people take shots at the dog. So you won't really see me taking these plus 420 straight up bets. What I will do is fade the Nunez by KO, and I will bet this fight to go uh, to uh, to go the distance, um, which is which is uh, is is pretty much uh, um, that's a uh, that's already a pretty decent underdog, I think. So we have. Fight to go the distance plus 165. Okay. Now, what I might do, this, this could be really, really scary. Maybe I could play Nunez inside, excuse me, Nunez by decision. Um, so Nunez by decision has got to be really, boy, not that much. It's only plus 250. 
That's really surprising. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to take the fight to go the distance. Um, now, it's just a question. Do I want to go over 2.5 plus 140 or just to go the distance of plus 165? Um, I'm going to... I should probably just take the 140 just in case there's a... I mean, is it really worth worth sweating that extra minute that two and a half minutes for an extra 25 cents i don't think so so we're going to take the over plus 140 the over 2.5 rounds plus 140 for 180 dollars in this fight okay oh this next fight this this one to me is easy when i say easy you'll get used to this it's easy with respect to there's just an incredibly easy narrative out there, which I am just going to fade. Okay, so here's the deal. You have Alves and Dalby. You know, Dalby is is you know pretty technical, but he's definitely a decisionator. He just doesn't finish. And and Albies is pretty good. And if there's anybody that's gonna finish this fight, it's going to be Alves. So the idea is you wanna play Alves inside the distance or Dalby um by decision. So what we are going to do is we are going to play the opposite. We are either going to play Alves by decision or Dalby by, by uh, finish. And let's just see what this is all about. Dalby to win by KO is plus 350. And Alves to win by decision is plus 300. So this is really interesting. Right. I think that we are going to you can play one of these two, right? So I think I'm gonna play hmm. Fight props. It's gonna be one of those things. I don't want to just go inside the distance because then I'm getting the Albies, which I don't want. Um what I could do, wow, this this could be nasty. It's like I didn't lose enough doing this last week. If I could play Dolby in say round two or three, instead of just Dolby by KO. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do this. So we're either gonna play Dolby round two or Dolby round three. The idea is that Albi is just kind of like just just over just overextends in the first round. Dolby takes over. Maybe he's not as much of a decisionator as people think. Boy, this is really asking for it. But we're going to try it. Dolby round two plus 850. Good luck with that. Okay. Um, Israel Bonfim versus Terrence McKinney. Um, all right. So... There, this is this is the narrative. You have McKinney is a first round or bust, and if Bonfim survives the first round, he should be able to take over. So what we are going to do, we know I'm pretty sure of this. It's gonna be one of two things. We're either gonna go Bonfim in round one because you know that's people are looking for McKinney in round one. Or maybe we can go McKinney in round two. So either McKinney in round two, which is probably going to be a million to one, or Bonfim in round one. Let's take a look and see what these things are. You have uh, round props, right? So we have Bonfim in round one is plus 225. Oh, there it is. McKinney in round two plus 750. I mean, do you know the difference here? I mean, he's plus 150 in round one and plus 750 in round two. There just has to be value there. So we're going to try this again. Terrence McKinney, round two for 180. All right. Moving on. We have Luan Lacerda versus Cody Stamen. Um, all right. So this is what I got. I got Cody Stamen is, is better or both better both on the feet and also with his wrestling. 
The only chance Lacerda has is basically jujitsu. But the idea is that Stamen's got a lot of, you know, he's he's got a lot of experience. He'll kind of stay out of the way and probably just kind of cruise his way to a decision. So what we're going to do is the opposite, one of two things. We're either going to play Stamen inside the distance or maybe just play Lacerda for the win, okay? Um, I don't know if I want to play Lacerda by sub. Um, I think it is possible that Lacerda can win this decision, but let's just take a look. Lacerda by sub is plus 600. And Lacerda by decision is only plus 800. I'm going to, I'm going to do the Lacerda by submission at plus 600. Lacerda by submission at plus 600. That is, I really think that is his path to victory. Um, and, um, Boy, oh boy, do I want to do this? The only other thing I could think of, and we're, you know, we're, we're gonna let we're gonna let the odds determine this. If Stamen in round two is better than Lacerda plus by submission, like if you can get better than plus six hundred, Stamen round two will go by. I think so. We'll, we'll try to play Stamen. Let's take a look. Stamen. What was this? Um, Stamen in round two. Wait, 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 it's got to be round props, right? Round props. Stamen round two plus eight fifty. Well, I almost, I almost would rather play Stamen round one. Stamen just beats him up, takes him down, gets the submission, maybe. This is a really, really tough one. It's gonna be, it's going to be one of these. Let's 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 change our mind. Let's go stamen round one. Stamen round one. Oh, I don't know. We're not playing stamen by decision. That's too easy. I just have this feeling that Lacerda by submission is also undervalued, overvalued. Because I think people are saying that's his path to victory. So we're going to go with Stamen round one. Um, Stamen round one plus 650 for 180. Okay, perfect. Makes us just uncomfortable enough that it just might work. Okay, Bonfim versus Lazez. This, this, again, this to me is pretty easy. You got two Bonfim brothers, you know, one against McKinney and the other one against Lazez. Where people aren't exactly sure if, if Bonfi in the first one is, is going to beat McKinney. This one is apparently the, the, the much better guy. Like this is the guy that has Lazez covered pretty much everywhere. And Lazez is 35. And, and so the Bonfi should be a lock. But why is he only 165 if that's the case? Well, we're going to find out. So we're going to play Lazez plus the 140 for one eight. Very, very easy. Okay, Shamil Abdurrahim versus Jalton Almeida. So I think you guys know what I'm going to do here already. Well, we'll talk about this. With these minus 1,000 fights, um, I'm not going to play Almeida minus the 1,000 just because I don't feel like it. And I'm not going to play Shamil plus 700 because I think that's actually a bad line. I think that if they're giving it – 1,700. I think he's probably more like a minus 2,000. I don't feel like doing that. So the only, so what we're going to do is we're going to have to play him to, to do something people are not expecting, which is means that th there's a couple of things you could do. The, the overwhelming narrative is this. He's going to take him down, rear naked choke him, first round, boom. So what can we play aside from that? Because that's going to be the most over... I'll show exactly what's good, like going to be the worst value. Where is this? Uh, Almeida by submission in round one minus one twenty five is just is just the worst bet. Okay, I'm not saying it's not likely to happen. I'm just saying it's the one that's taken the most money and is probably the worst value as a result. Okay, so what we're going to do is either I got a couple of ideas. 
One is that you could play him by submission round two. Let's take a look what that looks like. He's plus 900 by submission in round two. I, I can't help myself. You, we can't get this guy to hold on for one round. I mean, really? Five minutes? Like It's like Spider-Man. You know, just what well, he told me doesn't knock him out, right? The other thing I was going to say is that maybe the other thing to do is play Almeida by KO in, in round one. The idea being that he could probably do whatever he wants anyway. Maybe he wants to get a KO on his record. But submissions are are, are safer. You know, I think that he's, that's what he's going to go for. So... I'm going to just hope that this dude can just survive one round and then they can get some rounds. In. So that's what we're going to do. Almeida by submission in round two plus 900. So what's cool about this betting card, I'm telling you, is all probably all you need is one. All right, uh, moving on. Tiago Moises versus uh, Acosta. Um... Not a lot on the money line. Uh, I'm really not getting too much of a vibe either way. Um, so we're probably just going to probably, again, just take a shot with Moises maybe by some in some some round. Um, you look at him by decision, a plus 175. I, I, I don't like that. I mean, I think he's going to finish. What I could do, I mean, you play him plus 180 by submission. That's not bad, but I'm a sucker for this stuff. We're, we're going to try around again. And once again, can't help it. We're, we're going to go for Moises in round two. Moises, round two, plus 180. These round twos just look like really, really good values that no one is playing. And that's what makes them good value. All right, Greg, 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 Gregory Rodriguez versus Bruno Ferreira. All right, so this one to me is sort of easy. So here's the here's the deal. Gregory Rodriguez is just, you know, he has an insane inside the distance prop. He's going to just come out firing. The only thing you got to worry about with Gregory Rodriguez is he does, he has gotten knocked out before, and Ferreira might get that lucky punch. So if anything, you should either bet, you know, Ferreira, but if you want to play uh uh, Ferreira, excuse me, you should bet Rodriguez. If you want to play Ferreira, you should play him inside the distance. Um, so what I want to do is play one of these guys, either one of these guys by, by decision or um, just the fight to go over. Or, or Excuse me. I For it to be over, it's got to only make it through the, you know, two and a half, one and a half rounds. And I'm getting eight to five. Um, I think that's what we're going to do here. So over one and a half is for 180. All right. Um, uh, you are Pateria versus Marcio Ruha. This is a really, really gross one. Um, but this is, this is, listen, again, this is, you're getting a history of success playing this way. This is Ruah's swan song. He's done. He's finished. Paterio is not great, but Ruah, Ruah is just coming in for his last paycheck. He's going to put his gloves on the ground, and that's going to be the end of this. So why in the hell is Paterio only minus 205? I don't know, but we're going to find out. We're going to go for this. We're going to play Ru Rua plus 175 or 180. This is just no chance to win. As they say in the movies, so crazy. It just might work. Paul Craig versus Johnny Walker. Another, another criminally easy one to, to bet from a betting perspective. So Paul Craig is basically like Mr. Submission. Like he's got terrible wrestling, terrible striking, a terrible chin, but you go into his guard and he's got, got something for you. He he actually submitted Jamal Hill, who's on this main event. He submitted Ankaliyev, who fought for the title. So you just don't want to go mess around with him. 
right? And Johnny Walker has a really, really poor fight IQ. So he, uh, you know, even though he probably shouldn't, he's probably going to just make a mistake. And Paul Craig is probably live for submission. Paul Craig by submission is just not happening. We're not betting that. I mean, it could happen. We're not betting that. But what we are going to do is we are going to do the, the Johnny Walker by decision. Okay? Because that has literally no chance to happen. And because there's literally no chance to happen, the, the odds of it are probably through the roof. Let's take a look. What do you get for Johnny Walker by decision? You get plus 800. Let's go. Johnny Walker by decision, plus 800. Let, let him stay in range. You know, how about a smart fight? Pick him apart. Let Paul Craig be just good enough to survive and cash at plus 800. Uh, now, you know, look, you're not playing Johnny Walker minus 135. The only thing that you could do differently is something like you could play this fight to end in round two. Ooh, maybe that's what you're supposed to do. Don't take a stand on this and just play the fight to end in round two or three. Round one is minus 120. I mean, it's favored to finish in round one for real. I mean, and you get this huge jump from minus 120 to plus 300. Maybe I should, maybe, I, maybe that's what I'm just supposed to do. I'm just going to go all in with these round two things. So either Johnny Walker by decision, the plus 800, or just round two anybody, plus 300. I don't know. Or plus round three, plus 650. I'll tell you this, if it goes to round three, and I'm sweating for that last finish, and I don't get it, and Johnny Walker ends up winning by decision, and I don't have it at 800, I am not going to be pleased. So listen, guys, I mean, I, I hate to put it this way, but if, if you don't want to do this, Walker by decision plus 800, I would play like one of these rounds. I would not play Craig by submission. That's got terrible. I think that has terrible implied value. Um, I would not play Walker by KO. I think that has incredibly bad value. I would not play inside the distance. I don't like that either. So I think I'm going to stick to this. Johnny Walker by decision with the good fight IQ, the plus 800. Good luck to that. Um, just a couple more, right? Jessica Andrade versus Lauren Murphy. Um, so this is what I'm getting. Jessica Andrade, she's going to win, but she shouldn't be 500. So whenever you have situations like that, where everybody agrees on that, we're just supposed to take Andrade to win and, and pick our favorite round again. So what we're going to do again is take a look at these round props. And we'll either do Andrade, oh my God, round three plus a thousand. A thousand. Andrade round one is plus 225. That's not bad. We're not playing Andrade by decision. It's going to be one of these rounds. Well, I, th I think we're going to have to do the old faithful. Now, you know what? Either Andrade round one or Andrade round two. Hmm. We're going to play. We'll do, well, you know what? We'll do Andrade in round one. And this is going to be the one round two that, that, that hits. But Andrade round one, she should crush. And you know what? That's what's going to happen. We're not, we're not going to let this get us. So we're going to play Andrade round two. Same for the one. Let's go. And then Gilbert Burns versus Neil Magny. All right. So these are the these are the, the bets we're not making. All right. Well, here's the here's the narratives. Gilbert Burns really hasn't covered. He he should he should win every which way. We'll probably get to him and submit him, you know, take him down, submit him. Neil Magny, if he's got any hope, it's gonna be, you know, just keeping him at range, keeping him at distance whatever. So what we're going to do is we are going to play Gilbert Burns. We're going to play Gilbert Burns by decision. 
Let's see what odds we get on that. Uh, Burns by decision, plus 180. That looks good to me. Okay, just, uh, is that last one? No, two more. All right, so you have the co-main event, which is a great fight. Uh, Devinson uh, Figueredo versus Brandon Marino. I think, if anything, there's a slight lean towards Moreno. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is, 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 is do this. I'm either going to play Figueredo because there is a little bit more love for Moreno, or maybe I'll go inside the distance. Um, I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I feel as though the majority of the public thinks this is just going to go the distance because most of the last few fights have. So it's either, I'm either going to go inside the distance or Figueredo. If I did go inside the distance, you know, I think that the Moreno side of it, again, is just going to be the overvalued side. That's just that's just my instinct. So it's either going to be just Figueredo or Figueredo inside the distance. Um, let's uh, let's just take Figueredo to win. here. But I don't know. The Figueredo is in Brazil. So you have. Well, you know what? Let's let's do that, actually. Let, let, let's actually do this. Wait a minute. I didn't even think about this. Figueredo by decision in Brazil is plus 250. I mean, if this does go to decision, how the hell is Figueredo losing? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna be a sucker on this one. We're going to play Figueredo by decision. Oh, man. For 180. This is definitely the fight. With, which is the with the worst, right? I think that 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 there's no real big lean for the public, but I think that Figueredo by decision, it's probably the smart play. It probably means you're not supposed to play it. We're really supposed to play Figueredo inside the distance, but we're not doing it. We'll we'll play Figueredo by decision plus one. All right, um, and then in the main event you have um, Jamal Hill versus. Uh, versus uh where is he versus jamal hill jamal hill versus glover Teixeira, um and you're you're seeing a, un, unfortunately or whatever this is a fight i probably would pass because this has been analyzed to death and, and you're you're getting you're really not getting a, a, a common take i mean for everybody that says that Teixeira will go take down jamal hill and submit him You'll, you'll find people that'll say, nah, no, nah, Jamal Hill will just kind of piece him up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to play this fight to, to go the distance. Uh, that's the one, that's the one take you're really not getting here. So we will go over, well, not, not over 1.5. We'll get this fight all the way. We'll get this fight all the way to the end. Uh, plus 380. It's probably a terrible line, right? Minus 650 plus, boy, oh boy. I don't want to. I don't want to buy into this two seventy juice. So what we'll do is instead of that, we'll just we'll just take the one thirty juice. We'll go over one point five. We'll be we'll be uh, we'll be cautious there, just because that that big forty four hundred cent vig is just rough. Um. All right. So over one point five minus the one thirty. So there you go. What I will be doing is all fifteen of these times one eighty. 2,700 will be put in. Probably going to lose them all, but let's review. Oliveira, minus 145. Uh, Nunez, Farron, over 2.5. Nicholas Dalby in round two, bombs away. McKinney, round two, bombs away. Stamen, round one, bombs away. Lazez, money line. Almeida, by sub round two, bombs away. Moises, round two, bombs away. Over in the Rodriguez fight. Shogun, why am I only getting 175? Probably because it's a lot. Walker by decision bombs away. Uh, Andrade round two, let's go. Burns by decision and Figueredo by decision, both pretty middling there. And then over one and a half in the main event for 180 per man. Do I bet it right now? Let's see. It's probably not going to let me. Yeah, it's not going to let me right now. But trust me, it will once I log off of Zoom. That will do it. Good luck, everybody.